today we're going to be starting a chapter called Chemical Equilibrium. If you think about all the chemical reactions that we've looked at so far this school year, we've assumed that all the reactions go to completion. What this means is that anytime you've seen a reaction up until now, you've made the assumption that the reactants get converted over into products and that the reaction stops when you run out of that limiting reactant. But there's a whole other set of reactions out there that don't go to completion. They're called reversible reactions because like it sounds, you might get the reaction to go in the forward direction or uh, it could turn around and your products can turn back into reactants. So the reaction may stop before all the reactants get used up because they never get all used up. There's an example that you have at least heard of. You may not be uh, super familiar with the workings of your car, but there is a reversible reaction that you at least have a concept of. So this balanced equation here shows you what goes on inside your car's battery. Your battery in your car is used for power and the forward reaction takes place releasing that energy in the form of electricity. If only the forward reaction take, would take place, your reactants would run out and your car battery would die. This isn't really convenient to have your car battery die on a regular basis. It's not just like swap them out for some double A's. So you have a part in your car called the alternator. The alternator's job is to make sure that the reverse chemical reaction also takes place. It alternates the direction of the chemical reaction. But here's the catch. The alternator only functions when your car is on. So if you accidentally leave your headlights on when you shut your car off, the alternator isn't running because the car isn't on. But the headlights require all the energy from your battery's forward reaction to function. And so those, uh, the headlights on your car will remain on, the battery will keep them running until that battery runs out of juice and all the reactants run out and it dies, right? So the alternator's job is to make sure that not only do you have lead and lead oxide and sulfuric acid reacting together to turn into lead sulfate water and energy, but it sends the reaction back again and takes that lead sulfate and water to turn them back into lead, lead oxide and sulfuric acid. So that's why uh, you, if you ever have to jump your car, what you're basically doing is giving it a little jolt of energy. You're supplying it with some energy right here and that allows this reaction to head back the other way and then your car starts running again. What I'm gonna send you guys to now is a YouTube video that shows you an example of a demo that I would do for you if we were here in person together. Um, but here's just some general rules of what you're gonna see. The setup isn't exactly like how I do it in class, but close enough, you'll get the general idea. Um, I'm, there's gonna be uh, two beakers that uh, one of them is filled with about 700 milliliters of water. And the full beaker is gonna represent our reactants beaker. And then there's gonna be an empty beaker, which represents the products. So when we're gonna, in this video, you're gonna see, they're gonna be transferring beaker, for, uh, excuse me, transferring water from the reactants beaker into the products beaker. However, because we're looking at equilibrium reactions, reactions that can go both directions, you'll also see them transferring water from the products beaker back into the reactants beaker. They're gonna do two different trials of this. Uh, one, where the beakers that are being used to transfer the water back and forth are of equal size. And another trial where the beaker sizes that they're gonna be transferring the water back and forth are of unequal sizes. And so as you watch that video, uh, you can record some notes to yourself here 
about what it looks like when you have the uh, two beakers of equal sizes transferring the water back and forth and then what do the beakers look like at the end when you're using different size beakers to transfer the water back and forth. Go check out that video and then come on back after you've seen it.